Thank you everyone for being back. I'm very happy that Liz from Artist Duo Obermorgen is with us. I don't think I have to really introduce you because everyone knows you. You're icons of NetArt and I remember the first time we've met. Uh, I had a bit of a... Uh, yeah, that was on Clubhouse. Maybe people remember Clubhouse. That was a big thing last early last year. And I was hosting uh, rooms uh, together with Johann Koenig, for example, and I remember at some point seeing you in the audience and I was like texting Johann, I was like, oh my freaking God, there's Liz from Ubermorgen and she raised her hand, we have to get her on stage. And then I had a bit of a, I was a bit of starstruck <laughs> for a second. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a great moment for myself and uh, yeah, it's beautiful that you're here with us tonight. So I hand over the mic to you and uh, yeah. Grazie mille. Um, so uh, I'm trying to be real concentrated, but of course about 98% of my mind is just thinking of Queen Elizabeth. And uh, if you're not doing that, what's wrong with you? So I um, made this presentation because I think ahead pretty dumb. So you can work with those 2%, okay? So um, yeah, it's called uh, this. And um, l'origine du pixel. Uh, Lucius, you know, he used to call himself Hans, but his name is Lucius, and now his goes by Lucius. Um, he came up with the title. I have no idea what he meant. I mean, I mean, literally, I know, but I don't know, so I just tried to work around it. So I'm presenting a very depth analysis. analysis I can't speak by Uber Morgan, um, which is me, and as who is the star, as you rightly pointed out, and then there's Lucius, who is a Swiss person. And um, I just wanted, I always need things organized, so um, this is what I'm going to talk about. It's like things uh, you can read, I hope so. It's like, it's all regards a little bit to the NFTs, but not only. So, yeah, pretty colors, huh? So, um, just a little bit, yeah, about me, so that's me, and um, I want to just point out, if you don't like, if you don't know Mitsuko Uchida, you really need to know her. She's the best pianist, in, not in the world, like in theory, but she's real, let's put it that way, and she's really nice too. She's a very enjoyable person, and you should listen to that, and um, so... The question is, what's the first point? You know, if you remember here, I said the first point is who is stronger narrative or pixel because that's something that Lutzes and I always kind of, I'm like the pixel, he's like the narrative. And uh, so that's the question, who is stronger, right? The pixels or the narrative? Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, like I personally, uh, pretty much always start from, from the pixel. And it doesn't really matter if it's in real life or on the computer screen, which is real life too, it's not dream. Um, because uh, I don't like many of things of the real life so much, so I prefer to do things in different colors and very concentrated. And, uh, and then Lucius comes and says, like, nobody will understand this. What is it even about? And I say, I don't want to tell you. So he comes up with some narrative. And I think that's stupid, but then he comes up with a narrative, and then I go, like, no, actually, it makes sense. So um, kudos to him, because... Like if, as, I, as I wrote down here, which was a good thought, it's like I, uh, I really like to compress everything into very small amounts of visual information because I think it's more pleasing to the eye, um, except if you look into space, but that's also really just very low res in the end. Um, so it really needs a narrative because otherwise it just remains completely user unfriendly, which was a show that we once did in London but it's important. So I want to give some examples what we kind of mean by that with narrative and pixels, and that's why I just figured I used this one. It's a, I, you know, it's not a project from 22, that's just a screenshot from now. Uh, maybe, I don't know, something 2007 maybe-ish, I don't know. And um, 
like uh, I wasn't interested in the project or in Lutz's narrative um, because you know it's it's like the sound of eBay, so it's a, a generative piece that makes a sound from eBay user profiles and eBay user data, whatever you know. And uh, I don't have the sound with me; it's on, it's online, so you know that shit, that web stuff. So I just figured uh, what I actually do like is um, um, teletext porn. I don't like teletext so much. I don't, but I think teletext porn is the best porn in the whole world. Because if you can't get off to this, you're a god, you know? That's really awesome. And um, so this is kind of how we work. So we bring the stuff together and then we both either like it from our perspective or we both like it from both perspective or we are allowed to hate it. And that's how we kind of cooperate. We don't need to be, like we don't agree to disagree, we disagree to agree, kind of. That's our plan. That's so smart. So um, another example. Um, oh, is this one? We can listen to this one. Let's see. Now we'll see if the sound works. No sound in the beginning. Uh, wait, maybe I should say, see, there we go again with the narrative. Maybe I should say something first. Uh, this project is called Wapow, and it, it's... It says something, I forgot what the abbreviation is for, but it's about Somali pirate fashion. Um, so because Somali pirate fashion is very interesting. And um, we were originally invited to a document of, with that project, but then they uninvited us because they were not in agreement with the African people on the project not wanting to be called artists. And then it didn't look good for the documentary that the artists were white and the theoreticians were African. So, um, so it's about Somali pirate fashion, of course, only about fashion and not about anything else. Oopsie, that was bad. No, let's try again. I just noticed this was a bad example because I actually did the words for that and uh, Hans did the concept. And I remember thinking this is such a boring concept. So I just stood there and talked about it like a fashion person. 
And then he does this awful thing. He always then starts, I just talk, and then she starts writing. It's really not nice. It's like very impolite. And I say like, what are you doing? He's like, I need to write it down. And then he, we, but it, I really love this project in the end. It was really great. And we did a nice trip for this project. You know, we did lots of trips for, you know, researching on site, because that's a thing that we do. And it was amazing to speak. That was actually amazing, not American amazing, um, to speak uh, with uh, the people who were involved with, uh, you know, the Somali pirates and stuff. So, uh, and uh, Somali government and uh, conflict researchers and so much. It would have been a really great documentary project, so I'm so sad for you that you didn't see it, but it was very woke of them to not feature it, so kudos. Um, I sound like I'm butthurt, I was not. It was actually really great because we had a great summer and otherwise I would have had to work so much, so it's, I'm not, it's fine. So next topic. Um, Topics and platforms. I wanted to speak a little about uh, how we kind of choose topics that we work with and uh, how to choose the platform or the medium uh, to kind of portray the stuff. Um, we tend to choose our topics so they won't work on the art market. Um, this is not deliberate, but it helps with the NFT business in some case. I mean, to like it. Let's. Okay, just the swoosh again. Oh yeah, I just wanted to say, just, yeah, that's the reason. Okay, so back. It will do the thing again, it makes me very happy. Oh, nice. So, um, I structured the situation because it's important to structure the situation. I mean, I don't know, you, you know the game, you know, the, the American TV game? where you have to answer with questions. You don't know it? Thank you. I feel like in school, and finally the class is speaking. Thank you very much, you're alive. So um, that's kind of, you see the topics, uh, how I think we mostly think about stuff. And, and it's like, we're trying to go more into the region of, ooh, it's working because the world is like really dystopian at the moment. So I'm not a big fan at the moment of doing um, topics that fit more the category of uh, we didn't need that because we already see that every day. But um, I want to point out to the bottom here, it says Neo Biedermeier. I put that in two boxes because it didn't fit. And I'm really sorry about that because it breaks the situation. Um, but this is what we kind of call um, the kind of the art era that we're in, like if a neo Um because everything's like sometimes also in the NFT world, you know, NFT art world especially, everything's very nice and it's like many colors and you can put it up on any screen and it will fit and nobody will be upset. And that's fine, you know, it's fine, but just saying. Well, we did another project. Um, I, See, I were trying not to do, we didn't need that, but this is exactly where I put the link. So this is a link, I hope it doesn't fuck up everything. This is a project called Brightbud. It's kind of a telling name. Um, let me get that away, so. And it loads a little bit. You just look at it, it works with your brain, you know how it does. And um, um, this is a project that was mostly, that was not for the art market, but it was marketed to uh, the alt-right scene. So we figured we make some art for them. And um, it was also featured in an exhibition at the Hartware Kunstverein in Dortmund. You know, Inke Arndt is such a great curator, so she, uh, yeah, she did a show on, um, I forgot what it was called, it had such an amazing title. Ah. It will come back to me tomorrow or something. But, so wait, so I need to scroll a little and then we can click something and it says ASMR. And then it goes again really slow. This is really a web piece. So that's why it really takes its time and so on. And, uh, but we are not in the web now, so. So and it has this thing 
which has, has like this huge database and it live generates more data for the database and it's all really complex code. And, uh, and then it recombines it and it makes like this meditative piece that's there to flush your mind. Um, yeah, you just enjoy it at home, I guess. It's nice if you want to be more in the alt-right. So that's the next one. Yeah, that's the next format that's like platforms. How do we uh, decide what platforms or what medium to use? So like on the top, you see the different mediums, right? And well, maybe like this is obviously just how it plays out for us. And I want to start with the NFT because we are like in an NFT space here anyway, right? So for us, the biggest plus with the NFT is the money situation. Because otherwise, I mean, we have like, I think three people that ever bought our work outside of NFT worlds, yeah. Like one really nice collector that everybody knows. Um, but, um, and then some really clandestine collector from Belgium that everybody knows, but nobody knows his name. But the other collector, I should say, is you know, Alain Servet. Um, he bought a work of ours. But otherwise, oh, you know, when we were uh, working with uh, Fabio Paris Gallery, he would sell some little items, you know, to people like locally. But otherwise, you know, you can't. Um, you know, the art market doesn't really enjoy alt right videos, you know, that's not really happening. But of course, in the NFT world, <laughs> the alt right videos are really, that will work really well. Especially on foundation, um, we should really make a new user account there. So, um, but on the other hand, the other as aspect that I really like about it, like really like about it is quick. Um, because um, the way we work, we end up doing like these huge projects all the time, which is great from a narrative perspective. But on the other hand, sometimes you just want to do stuff. So um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that downside really is for me especially, it's just way too much. I can't, I don't, I mean, I do like Twitter, but I don't, you know, what, should I go on Twitter and tell other people that I like their work? That's kind of, that, for me, that's weird. I don't criticize people who do that, but it's not me, you know, so. Um, I sometimes do, so if I ever do, it really means something. I'm never superficial. So the, the thing that I mostly don't like is this part, like uh, I hardly see any, con I'm trying to make as a good feed on the Twitter regarding really good, having good NFTs in, but um, I'm sound complaining again. I don't mean complaining, I'm just meaning I, I would love more content, that's what I'm saying. Um, I think you, did you read the rest? I just want to say, of course, that you know, our favorite uh, medium still is the website, always has been, always will be in a way. Um, but oh, like, you know, like it made sense in the mid 90s to start doing uh, net art. It now makes sense to do an NFT art because you gotta, gotta go with the current. Um, I want to show, I mean, I didn't make some links, so I do like a museum piece. So I'm just gonna show you this one. Wait, how, where is it? Is it this one? Yep. So that's, my, the, that's by far the f most favorite just ever show that we did that was in Kassel. And um, it's called No Limit. It's like the story of a family. Um, and uh, it has like, a, there's a, a fairy tale that goes with it and all these like the, this, the, these different rooms. It's a, uh, and uh, the stories on these deconstructed, that's how, what the, the cooks say, right? Deconstructed foods, and it's like these constructed um, readers. And um, yeah, that's like the living room. And, uh, and what I really like in this, and, yeah, I, really, I like everything in this show. Uh, I really like this piece. This is called, like this is the portrait of the mother. It's a, non-functioning fridge with black milk, but very lit, you know? It's, it's, yeah, one could say it's about a narcissistic person, that's true. So, um, and, um, thank you, Ikea. Uh, and of course, uh, oh, 
We were not inspired by Paul Celan uh, for this thing, but it really fits, you know, the, the, there's this poet, this poem, you know, and there's all the text. And one of our most favorite videos, I mean, I really like this video so much, and it's up on Vimeo. It's called Nice Vanilla Latte. Um, I, I can't talk about it more because then it's too much talking. But that's so cool, very meditative. It's the same video, it's just different. It's a, you know, this is this one, one of the first incel, ma uh, like more spree killer murderers. You know, he wanted to kill all these blonde girls, but then he, he couldn't even get the right girls to kill and so on. Um, we researched a lot. See, I'm not talking about it. So, ah, no, I'm not talking about it. You watch it online and otherwise you don't know anything about it. Gotta have some. And um, yeah, maybe text PR. I wanted to say something about that text because this is again, because narrative is so important and Lutzis really likes to write and in the end so do I. Um, we've been using the newsletter, especially the newsletter and the press release as a medium for ages. I remember actually our first piece that we ever did together was a press release for Ars Electronica and it was called something like Linux wins pre Ars Electronica due to Microsoft intervention. And we released it just like 15 minutes before they, Ars Electronica had their um, press, you know, luncheon, whatever, you know? And like, and everybody, we knew all the addresses where to send it to. And they, oh, that was really, that worked beautifully. Um, Maybe Ars Electronic was a bit pissed off afterwards, but I mean, that's if you you know if you're part of the audience, you gotta be pissed off once in a while. But I think the newsletter and and like just like these formal ways of writing a newsletter, a PR uh, letter, or an email that's very clear, like a corporate email. I think that's a great um, art medium. Um, yeah, and TV obviously that's like the vote auction thing, but. As I always say, I always put it there, but I was like, but I don't want to talk about vote auction. Um, it's a different story. So, yeah, I just sometimes, wait, that's not just, uh, so that's the next one. Yeah, that was the next one on the line was how do we make pixels? And um, so this is how we uh, work usually. There's like three standard ways. The one is for the found footage. So it basically means if I think like, oh, I really like capybaras, but I don't like purple, you know, just search for capybara minus purple, and then I, you know, then I just re render it down to really the results I want to have, and then recombine it, and then it's really like cooking the stuff until it's all fine and, and spicing it up. And this is really like how this shit works which I started beginning of this year. And, um, and uh, yeah, for some time I released one every day and it was fun, but, uh, but it was also like fucking exhausting. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm, got, I'm not gonna end my life over making this every day because, you know. Um, and it's really a nice collection of stuff that's, you know, like the done, uh, I hope this loads fast, uh, with AI. And um, I don't know, and, and you know, it's, a, it's like, a, it's not supposed to be awesome and great and wonderful, it's just something that's quick and dirty, and uh, except for the loading times. And uh, see, what the hell? Something went very wrong, yeah. Okay, but you've seen it, no? That, that's really not, that's very interesting, huh? Okay. Um, but that's how I kind of do that stuff. Um, and then there's stuff that, uh, how I really like also producing stuff, and that's uh, the off-label way. So that means um, you use software that's not meant to make uh, anything visual, either artsy or anything visual at all, uh, to make uh, visuals. And this was done by, um, this is called, project's called Oldify, and it's, um, you know, you use the, uh, the kids used a, an, an app, uh, you know, to make up, Barbie makeup app, and then you put the image that is generated into the Oldify app, and then comes out a really old Barbie, and then you have to clean it up. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's like the artistic work then afterwards to make it look really good and reduce it to the color, as I said before. I prefer having, you know, like seven colors or something, that's enough. 
Um, these are like, um, that's the one, this one or another iteration of that one um, that Alain bought and they're like really big and they're printed on aluminum and uh, yeah, that's cool. And you can make like, you can make really cool uh, art with uh, this program, you know, with, uh, that's the Google Slides because you can, you can like layer images and put the transparency and the uh, contrast and everything, you can all, so you can kind of use it like Photoshop. It makes really good stuff, I really love it. And then the third way that we sometimes make uh, images is if you have to follow the topic. And it's really hard, because you have to go for real ugly, but otherwise it's not true. You know, like this is a classic fake site um, it's about a farm that produces organic dog meat. And they're fed, the dogs are mean dogs, and they're fed with the nice animals, you know? So you get, you know, it's for the thinking. And, uh, and there's recipes and shit, you know? So you need to have a hundred grams of dog and shit. Um, we, by the way, did this uh, project at the same time when we did a reiteration of uh, vote auction for like some rich Swiss person who wanted to do this uh, semi similar thing in Switzerland. And so like buying votes basically in Switzerland. And at the same time we were doing this thing, and it was bo not, both of them were not big projects, but we intertwined them because there was people selling their vote in Switzerland and, uh, or buying votes, I think. Um, and they expected to get sent, um, you know, you can use e um, mail voting in, in Switzerland very easily. So they were expecting those uh, envelopes, signed envelopes uh, to vote, but they got dog salami and the people who ordered the dog salami got the, um, you know, the mail-in votes, ballots. So that was nice. And they were all really upset, but I mean, go and see the police, have fun. So, yeah, in general, I'm not talking about, I mean, as you saw, maybe the exhibition before was very white. In general, I don't like exhibitions because there's always people in there. And I think that's a bit disgusting. Not the people by themselves, but that it's mixing. And so... Uh, and uh, I can do some art writing, but what the hell? Nothing makes sense when I read that stuff, but apparently people enjoy it, so I sometimes do it. So now to the next part, you know, the NFT. What's it? Uh, is the queen still alive? Is she dead? Nobody's checking. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, like this is what do you need to know. Like many things before us, this will save us. It is very helpful. So, um, yeah, I think like most people have an 80s perspective, in the art world, many, many people have an 80s perspective to seeing art. Um, sometimes making art, making art maybe sometimes more 90s perspective, yeah, but like how you kind of, what you want from it, what kind of entertainment or non-seriousness and whatever. And I, I don't critique that, you know, what's, you know, what's wrong with the 80s except for so many things. Um, but at least they were not a neo Biedermeier or ultra neoliberal, you know, that's not bad. So, but it's something that I think about when, uh, when I, do the stuff or look at art, you know, what's my perspective? Um, okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I don't want to say like, you know, why do we do, we do NFTs? Like, why do I take a step over there? there there's got to be a reason why you don't do something, otherwise nobody needs to explain it. Um, for whatever reason, it's been like hugely popular to ask people, why are you doing NFTs? It's so weird. And... Uh, if you answer that question, I don't know. Maybe not answer that. So that's why I'm answering the question. Um, as I said before, the quick and dirty making NFTs and their DIY. I love that. 
you know, especially when it's about music. I've never used, you know, we've never used, like, Hans plays the drums, I play piano, but we've never used it in our art. That's like our private shit. Uh, but for NFTs, um, we can use that because you just get it done quick at home, and, and so that's great. Uh, I like that there are so many platforms. Um, and there is, uh, and that not, not everything has to be a project, as I said before. Um, as a general guideline, when, I, when we do stuff, we think about, like, is it two categories? Is either it got to be sexy dystopian or it got to be cultist utopian at the moment? This is like a yearly theme that we kind of work on to have, like, you know, a binary thing going on. I mean, it's not good to be that binary, but it's, you know, it's a fight more. It's not even a binary thing. It's more of a fight. Um, we do 99.9% uh, .9 of our stuff on Tezos. We only did one project on Ethereum that's still ongoing. And uh, we did it on Ethereum because we were uh, forced to. And not that it, you know, not, I'm not com again, not complaining, but it was not our choice. Um, but it's great. You know, Ethereum is a luxury item. so. The more expensive Ethereum is, the more will be bought, because if you have studied economics, you haven't, okay? It doesn't matter. Crypto and economics are not connected, so nobody needs to know. But in general, um, we'd like to do stuff cross-chain, but more like, like Solana and some you know, weird shit, like Doge or I don't know. But I think Tezos is really, you know, it's, we're happy with that. So I wanted to show you some of the items. Um, what should I show you? I showed you some of that. So, yeah, maybe the, let's start with the Ethereum shit that we did together with Knight Thompson. And it's uh, some, there they are. These are the three ones. Um, yeah, that's too big. Don't be a bitch. So, um, that's an offspin of a, of a movie or a film called Uninvited. And it's a film made, uh, it's only like uh, CCTV footage, but uh, still footage, uh, combined together into a uh, horror movie. And, um, and then we made a, like a set of triptychs, triptychs out of that. And um, we have a second one up that we actually don't like, so we just redid it. And then it uh, will come, we have a few coming up, but those were really nice and those also actually sold which was nice, especially I'm really happy about where that's the sold to, because it was uh, bought by a guy. I asked him afterwards, why did you buy him? Because I saw his collection, and it's mostly collectibles. And he said, it, because it was, it was featured on OpenSea, it was on the front page, that's why it was visible. Um, he said he just really read about it, and then he got really interested. On the one hand, I was really angry, because I thought, like, damn, Lutzis is right, narrative is important, but on the other hand, it, you know, it's nice that somebody is like, it, it reminded me a little bit of that exhibition I showed before, you know, the, the average time people spent in that exhibition was two and a half hours. And, um, and that's, I, I like it when it starts being long, which is slow, and so that's good. Um, if you want to see the, the movie, it's called Uninvited ICU, and there's, I think the movie is online. Um, I have this after. Yeah, there's the, the dicks. That the dicks came out of um, the this don't buy this NFT thing. I just did a dick in there, and uh, and it kept on coming, and um, and then people were really eager to see more dicks, and it wasn't that hard. But you know, what gonna do? Um, so um, you know, in a world where dicks are really important. Sometimes I think it's also, it makes sense to make more dicks so you can really just see them. The problem is, of course, that, um, you know, it's fine to have lots of, like, naked female bodies uh, in museums, but if you just put up one dick, if one dick is standing strong on your Instagram, you don't have an Instagram anymore. So, um, after, like, four months, we have given up and we're making a new Instagram account. And uh, maybe we should make like a, a, the Dick's Instagram account by itself, so it will never work, but I don't know. Um, yeah, so we, um, 
there is more to say about the dicks, but I think I, yeah, no. Oh, maybe we go, before we go into that again, and there's a new thing that we're working on, it's called Chinese Hash, because we did this project also, which is fun, also on a Chinese coin and the Chinese red, it was called, like also on, uh, you know, pe uh, people in China working in those sweatshops making um, coins for online games and so on and blah, 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 and uh, uh, we're doing the third iteration of this project and it's going to be called Chinese Hash. That sounds like smoking. So that's the, these are a few unreleased sticks. They have not released yet. So um, that's the, past, the neon pastel. Uh, I will call it, I, I call it the Miami Vice. And this one's for Annika. Which one? Yeah, you take both. She takes two dicks. So, um, and this one I'm still working on. This is the robot, but it's not working. It's not enough pixels for a robot, so this is where I'm standing right now, or it's standing right now. Well, it will happen one day, and it will be very expensive, because this is, I've been working on that, I think, already for like 60 hours at least. Never happy with the outcome. Um, this is the one I made for here. Um, Francisco Carolina, so Franz Karl. Uh, I thought, got to go the Austrian the Habsburg version, and um, Lutz has really liked it. I think it's, it, I think it's beautiful. And, and, you know, and it couldn't be anywhere else. So it's, uh, I like, you know, you, you can order a dick with me. That's possible. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to make it, but I'll try. And otherwise, um, yeah, that's the, the idea at the moment. Um, We'll just put dicks up for auction, or you can order them. And um, um, the next uh, NFT stuff I'm going to show is like the series called Cerebel. And um, this is one that's actually also on the Ethereum chain, and it also sold once. I just remember we sold something else on the Ethereum. See, it's like really slow. It's only the background that's changing. It's a uh, Spitzweg. And... Uh, painting and she's in there. You know, it's like against like this Neo Biedermeyer theme, obviously. And then, wait, go away. How do I go to the next one? Stop, stoop. That's the next one, iteration of her. Then there's a third one. No, not that. That's not the third one. Come on. And that's, that's, this was called No More Daisy Fields. Um, that one has been sold also, but it's like, that's a, not a unique, but it's like, I think, eight copies, and I think two have been sold individually. Oh, they're cheap. They're like 30 tesos. Yeah. 
And uh, and I just we just did a show in in, in Klagenfurt <laughs> at the um, very small, you know, uh, the Mumok of Carinthia, which is really small. And uh, you know, there's this thing called repainting, where you take old um, oil paintings and you repaint them. So I figured this is just you know perfect for this especially. So I um, gathered. Um, you know, we gathered some paintings and then I went to the oil, um, which was fun to do also sometimes. Um, yeah. So to finish up this talk, this was the last item on the, you know, the contents that I sure you remember I showed in the beginning. How can the pixel be a piece de resistance? And um, so, I'm just going to show you some things so that are more like that. Mm. <laughs> I, need to, uh, I, I forgot to say this is part of a series called Super Enhanced. So Supermax Prisons and Enhanced Interrogation. Um, yeah, we, we uh, had a, a guy who was a guard in Guantanamo living with us for like three months. And uh, that's kind of, you know, because we were doing a lot of research on this stuff. That's one of my, you know, also favorite project of mine that we did that was very much a piece de resistance in a way that was together with Christoph Schlingensee for the German speaking audience. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's just pixels. What are you going to do? And uh, it was a, uh, a website that was, sorry, the, that's coded in PHP and that's, I didn't code it. I only called in Perl and it all runs, but this shit doesn't run. And um, it was a, a, a platform for neo-Nazis, helping them to get out of neo-Nazism, which was very modern at the time in Germany. And uh, Christoph, did an, um, a, he did a piece, a play at the Schauspielhaus Zürich, and uh, we recruited the neo-Nazi, ex-neo-Nazis, for the stage. That was the kind of thing, and uh, yeah. yeah, you can look at it if you are interested. So, um, and the last one is called Asylabwehramt, or Asylum Defense Agency. I'm going to switch to the English here. Um, well, it's a, you know, a sound defense agency. We did this in this installation that we did. Wait, where can you see build a video? Is that here? Yeah, that's the installation. It's like a, you know, a government offices. And uh, we just, Actually, this picture in the end, this one. Uh, before I say that, uh, that, that was in. Um, we did that in the in the in the first district in Vienna, and um, and it, it was a building that was before used for um, a, as a you know government building, but it's just a regular building. And they left the uh, their eagle, you know, the official eagle on the side, and it had said nothing on it because it was used for different you know government. Uh, um, departments, so we just put our asylum on the eagle, which is, you know, legally really fine, works well because you're not destroying it, it's just glue, and we did take the eagle afterwards with us. Um, but so it was looked super real, and also for the exhibition, people like literally walked into uh, the, the installation and thought they were in a government office for asylum defense. Actually, asylum defense at the moment, of course, this is always the problem with this, you know, um, stuff that's so avant-garde is that, you know, as we know, politics will catch up to you. So now at the moment, there is an asylum defense department at the ministry of, I don't care, wherever they are at the moment. Um, and uh, we just had to change 
we decided to change our uh, um, the data the here the impressum uh, because we just got like the 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 state of Austria got sued for using this image right here you know it just says you know and um, well so basically what I'm trying to say here is like if you do stuff like that it's it works really well but it keeps on you know biting your ass for a really long time but you know that's fine and uh, yeah, that's I'm not going to talk about AI, AI. That's boring. And I'm just going to leave you with this one because this is so nice. And then we're going to be done. This is from the Deep Horizon. This is images from uh, the big oil spill in the Gulf of, of Mexico back in the day, rendered into 3D and broken down by bad compression. That was dramatic enough, so you can read the rest. Stop. So, thank you very much. And uh, bye bye.